So the most important thing is actually to keep your temperature constant as best as you can. They have the saying that if you sweat, you die, and that's perhaps over dramatic. But the idea essentially is to not sweat by not getting too hot. That means lots of layers and taking them off when you're moving and getting warmer and putting them straight back on when you stop. You regulate your body temperature using lots of layers and that way you don't sweat, get wet and rapidly lose heat. Okay, so now we've stopped, we found somewhere in a sheltered wood and you can see there's already less frost on the ground. Forests are going to be one of the best places to stay because it's going to be a little bit warmer, it's going to be more concealed. So the first thing we did now we stopped, this is my warm kit. When I've been moving, I've just got the merino wool base layer and a very thin pair of Rohan trousers. And of course this jacket over the top because it's quite icy this morning. But generally you want to be very well ventilated so you don't sweat and therefore you don't get wet and you don't lose as much heat through condensation and evaporation. The trick to keeping your temperature re regulated is lots of layers. And I tend to use natural fabrics generally, uh, apart from some of the newer Pertex fabrics and Gore-Tex because they breathe well and for example this wool swan dry shirt uh, not only breathes it's quiet uh, it's natural and um, doesn't really lose much insulation when it gets wet unlike down on the other hand, on the other hand this is uh, actually Gore-Tex so that's going to give me water and uh, wind protection but also allow me to breathe as well. The rucksack I'm using is a Berghaus Cyclops Vulcan 2. Amazing, had it for quite a while. It's based on a military Bergen and it has a very useful um, waist belt with a fast release. The shoulder straps are very well padded and the whole thing is very well put together. I've used it a lot and it's never let me down and it allows me to carry a heavier weight than I would otherwise be able to comfortably for long distances. It has these two pouches on the side that are standard and you can take them on and off and even make them into a smaller day pack if necessary. It's going to go through some of the kit that I use. I try and carry as little as possible but it's being aware for eventualities, making sure that I've got the equipment if I need it. You have merino wool uh, base layers. That. If it gets very cold, this is what I'll put on underneath. And if it's very cold, I also sleep in these as well. Dry bag, usually I've got my phone and camera in here. Just in case it rains, keeps it nice and dry. I have both trousers and jacket made of Gore-Tex. 
They get over everything else to keep me dry and warm out of the wind. And they're stored in the side pouch for easy access. In the bottom here, I've also got water purifying tablets. In the other pouch, I have, it's usually in the dry bag, a battery pack to charge the phone. Generally, I use the GPS quite often, and I use the phone, for example, for emergencies, and therefore it's very useful to have a battery pack for that. For food, I tend to be using the Ambronite or Huel uh, powdered meals, which I mix in with the water. It's easy to pack, lightweight, and relatively healthy. Gives me good energy. More base layers. This is a skiing base layer. This is the jet boil cooker. Very useful for keeping uh, warm with a nice warm drink. And in here I've got some boiled sweets. The ration pack. And that all fits very nicely together. This slots on the bottom and of course it doubles as a cup. For longer journeys I tend to have maybe one or two boil in the bag ration packs and they'll be cooked in here. Also soups. An all weather notebook to take little notes. Hygiene is important on longer journeys. If you haven't got uh, the showers or rivers you can bathe in on the way, I have um, wipes. Tissue paper. In a waterproof bag. More water pur purifying tablets as well. The water purifying tablets mean that I can drink from rivers and uh, lakes and so on. Uh, purify the water and therefore carry less. Those are the two side pouches. In the top, easy access, I have a bandage in case, for example, uh, there's an accident. I have a spork, a spoon fork, very lightweight and um, well made. More tissues pen for the notebook, a toothbrush, plastic bags that sealable to keep things dry if it rains, toothpaste, tampons to start fires, they make really good tinder. Uh, paracord. You can also, if you need to, uh, you can use that not only to go and create camps and so on, um, for creating a perimeter around the area you're sleeping in uh, to deter animals or other people, or you can also use that in a pinch to abseil a bit or along um, uh, steeper slopes. Of course, it's probably not a good idea to put your whole weight on it, but on a steep slope, you can go down using paracord. I have a head torch and that's gelled uh, red so that it doesn't affect my night vision so much and it's less um, obvious in the night and they're very useful. Compass. Lighter. It's a jet lighter. Uh, it's also doubling for um, burning through ropes, for example, but generally that's going to be quite useful to start fires. A pouch to keep most of the things if I need to move. I need to carry more things from my um, top pouch, but I don't want to carry the whole rucksack, so there's a little pouch for that. If it gets really cold, I've got a mountain space bag that also cuts down your IR signature for whatever reason. Um, but again, very light, very useful to have. Another antibacterial wipe uh, that doubles up with a bandage. If I hurt myself or somebody else is hurt, and you can clear this um, to uh, reduce the, the possibility of infection. 
little mini pot of soup. Concentrated. Blasters. They're also for blisters. And the tampon. And a mini wire saw. So creating camps and so on. Or tissues. And then here we have the uh, survival kit, which I've put together. That's stored in a plastic bag that's sealable, so it's waterproof. With this and a knife, you can really get quite far, um, creating your own camps and so on. In the larger bag, uh, surplus uh, Norgi shirt for the Navy, uh, incredibly warm and uh, quiet and very dark in the night, so it's nice and subtle, but doesn't look too um, uh, combat if you are going into, for example, a town. So this is generally what I'm going to be wearing. Um, these are lightweight shirts for a base layer and long johns if it gets really cold. Down jacket, they're very light and uh, very useful. This is by Crag Hoppers, there are lots of different types, but that's going to be a really um, ideal investment. It's a nice light weight down jacket. Bear in mind that if you do get um, it wet, you're going to lose a lot of the insulative properties. Except for the socks. Excellent, you can get them on eBay. They are the ex army socks and they're very comfortable. You can walk very long distances, very good value as well. Travel towel, very lightweight, very useful. If you get wet, it's one of the fastest ways to get cold, and so a travel towel is very useful to keep warm. Army mittens, nice and warm, hard wearing. For example, if I need to go and carry something I don't want to damage my hands, this is very useful. Uh, a pair of gloves, essential really if it's cold. Travel hammock, a bit of a luxury, not normally in here, but the idea is you can keep yourself or the bag off the ground. A cut down roll mat, it's inflatable. Insule mat, a Bozeman Mountain Works design, um, just enough to keep your torso warm and light feet in the bag. It's one of my favourite bits of kit. This is a Montane Pertex, nice and warm on the inside. Got the hood with it, it goes right over the top. It's going to be windproof, more or less. Uh, relatively waterproof and just an ideal bit of kit for everyday wear. When it gets cold and in the night I use these reversible uh, outdoor arctic trousers. They're over trousers so they go over the top of these trousers which are very thin and light they dry fast and they're ideal for moving so you don't sweat but over the top is going to keep them nice and warm as well. A basher, straight poncho. Not too large, not too small. That's going to cover the bag, or it's going to cover me as, uh, as a basher, or I can also use it to carry things, uh, to gather things, to collect water and so on. A waterproof sheet is incredibly useful. If it gets very cold, this goes over the top. I made a sleeping bag that's going to keep you nice and warm even in the snow. We have the sleeping bag. This is a modular combat sleeping system. There's actually two sleeping bags. 
Uh, one for more temperate weather, one for colder weather, and then zipped together they make an extreme weather cold bag and you can sleep out in the snow. Especially if you're travelling up in Scotland, where it's like that, this is really an excellent thing to have. What that's going to do is going to keep the midges off, or at least dissuade them a bit. It also cuts down on the shine of your face, for example if you don't want to be seen, uh, without having to put on any camouflage paint. This is an outdoor designed Gore-Tex Bivy. One of my favourite bits of kit, so they're carrying a tent um, or even a hooped bivy, just literally a body bag made of Gore Tex with a non breathable bottom. The sleeping bag goes inside this and then you just sleeps straight on the ground. The advantage is it's very lightweight, it can double as a, as a sack, to carry things, and it's waterproof. A couple of bungees there to help make the camp, for example, to put the basher up. Bag is the same. Heli Hansen under top, uh, nice and breathable, lightweight, and drives fast. Always have a bit more warm kit than you need, you never know if you do need it. For example, if you hurt yourself and can't move and you have to bed down for a while, for example, if the weather turns for the worse, it's always worth having a little bit more warm kit than you think you need. It's in a dry bag, so even if the bag gets very wet, this is going to be nice and dry. So I can strip off, dry off, put this on to keep warm. This is a lower alpine. It's not down, so if it does get wet, it's not going to lose insulation, and that keeps me nice and snug if I need it. Generally, I don't. Last but not least, it's a Gerber knife, fixed blade with a skinning hook. Catch game, skin it. Nice and sharp. That lives in there or on my belt if I'm away from civilization. And in there as well, you have the fire steel to light fires if the lighter runs out of gas. So when I'm roaming around, I tend to have a large uh, container or a couple of containers of water. You can obviously go and buy water bottles and so on, but generally if they're inside the bag you can actually go with just a couple of Evian bottles uh, that you get from a shop. And you can also have a large water reservoir if you're going to go longer distances, but generally a couple of one and a half litres or two litres are going to be perfectly fine. You can get a Camelback, they're quite useful with the um, tube that goes through to hydrate on the go, but not essential at all, an extra weight if you actually uh, think about it. So. When I'm eating, I tend to have a lot of muesli, uh, nuts and fruits and so on. I'm going to give a lot of energy for the weight and the compactness that you can store them in in the bag. I have uh, ambronite or huel, uh, meal replacement powders. Uh, it's a nice balanced diet, more or less, and it's going to be healthy and give me energy. And again, easy to pack and relatively lightweight. For uh, energy in a pinch, for example, if you're cold, uh, if you've hurt yourself and need to move, then for example high sugar snacks like Haribo or um, boiled sweets are going to be very useful again. Soups, uh, dried soups for example, uh, noodles and so on, they can be uh, a bit of a nice warm meal with the jet boil and boil in the bag ration packs, again very useful for a warm meal. Not essential, 
you can get by with muesli, uh, warm muesli and meal replacement powders mixed together. To avoid carrying too much water because it's quite heavy, you can use water purifying tablets uh, and you can boil water as well and that's going to allow you to carry uh, less, especially if you're tracking between rivers and lakes. Carrying a larger Bergen slows you down, it damages your knees but it's more stress on your body but it does mean you're more self-sufficient. You have for example the warm kit that you need if it gets really cold, you've got the waterproof gear you need if it starts to rain heavily, you've got um, the, for example, uh, sleeping bags and the bivy bags that you're going to need to sleep out and wherever. And all that takes weight, takes space, but allows you to roam for an extended period of time. You rely on water, food less so, uh, because you can eat less food when you're traveling around, um, and you can have, for example, ball in the bag ration packs, you can have uh, mineral replacement powders like Huel or Ambronite, you can have um, nuts and raisins in relatively large quantities, and go for a long way with that. You can also trap game, um, you can hunt, for example, and you can gather berries and uh, apples and other things like that. And the main thing is going to be water, so if you do plan your route along rivers, um, lakes, and even towns and so on, that's going to allow you to fill up and carry less water. Uh, you can use the jet boil to boil the water to purify it. You can use UV light to purify water uh, quite effectively. And you can also um, purify it using water purifying tablets or iodine. That's going to allow you to carry less water because water is very heavy. If you have the larger bag, you're going to be slowed down. For example, if you hurt yourself or if you need to get out somewhere quickly, you may need to leave the bag and carry a smaller bag, carry less kit and have enough to survive, but uh, probably less comfortably. To do that, you have your survival kit, which we have here, a waterproof bag in the top your Bergen and you have uh, a knife. Those two things are going to allow you to survive in most places less comfortably uh, with a bit more effort but it's going to be effective if you're going to travel faster or lighter. Also pockets. In this I have snares for food more snares for food and pens you have uh, your main knife, very useful, but it's always good to have a backup and a sharpening thing as well. Paracord, waterproof matches, an oatmeal block and another snare. So food, warmth and shelter. Shelter with a paracord. This is so stored in a waterproof bag with a handle. You can carry that. Not much else. Inside here, a little pouch, and you can get survival kits off the shelf. In here, I've got the Collins SAS Survival Guide, uh, really excellent and small. I have Kendall Mint Cake for energy, I have an emergency shelter. waterproof matches, water purifying tablets, a tampon to start a fire, a candle to keep the fire going. If the matches run out or don't work, a flint and steel to start fires, a mirror to signal with, fishing kit to eat, a 
button compass for directions, coffee for a warm drink, milk for the same, drinking chocolate mix, a couple of condoms, in case I get lucky, a couple of condoms for uh, water carrying and to waterproof things. Striker and a pen knife. So that small light kit, a knife, is going to allow me to survive in a lot of different areas um, with a lot less weight. Obviously not ideal, you'd be very cold, you have to start fires and so on, which is uh, generally not advisable in most places, but um, all of that is going to really help if you're travelling long distance and can't carry your larger Bergen. So obviously making this video in the daytime, but generally it's best when you're travelling wild camping to get in after dark and leave before it gets light. And therefore, you don't really want to mess around too much with making camps and so on, not only because they're uh, going to take time, but they're also going to leave more evidence that you've been there. So it's best to work with the environment that you have and just spend a bit of time looking around and finding places that are going to be nice and warm, sheltered and discreet. Here we've got a lot of foliage here that's going to cut down a lot of the wind and we're in a forest and that's going to again keep the temperature a bit warmer you know you have to carry less uh, warm gear. Setting up should be nice and simple so that you can do it in the dark and you can do it fast. Inside the bag Both sleeping bags zip together to make an extreme bag. Already inside the Gore-Tex Bibby bag, that's going to be my sleeping system. I use a lot of army surplus gear, it's really good quality and it blends in well with the forest. In the night, I've got the Bibby bag spread out, generally relatively hidden by foliage, for example, and using, for example, trees, fallen trees to um, cut out a lot of the wind and therefore keep warmer. The bivy bag is next to this basher. It goes straight over the bergen, gets tucked in at the sides and that keeps the whole thing nice and waterproof even if there's heavy rain showers during the night. I avoid going into uh, deep hollows in case rivers for example form or if there's uh, a lot of water uh, that's going to make everything damp uh, overnight. I'm going to use that with a cut down inflatable mat and that goes actually inside the bivy bag it doesn't roll around and it keeps it dry. It also protects it from the ground with the bottom layer of the bivy bag. Look for a nice flat space with a nice view out so that you see if anything is coming. And so the whole thing goes underneath. What I tend to do is actually have a log, for example, or a fallen tree well supported over my head just in case there's any deadfalls in a forest, branches for example if it gets windy, just to protect myself. When I'm sleeping, uh, you actually don't have to wear so many clothes I mean, if you're inside the bag because they're going to slow down the rate at which you heat the bag. You want to make sure the zips are nicely done up and the hood is on. And what I also tend to do is use, for example, a down jacket, uh, not worn, but actually worn like a blanket on top of me. Because if I'm lying on top of it, it's going to crush the down and it's going to have, uh, have no insulative value. So the down jacket actually acts like a, a duvet on top within the bag. If it's really cold, uh, I've obviously got the socks on, perhaps a bit of balaclava on as well, um, and just keep nice and warm like that. If it's very cold, if it's snowing for example, you actually want to move around before to get your body temperature up nice and high and then you go in the bag straight away. It's much more difficult to actually go and warm up a bag if you're already cold. 
get warm by moving and then go inside the bag to preserve that heat. We narrowly avoided becoming a Catholic country in England. Uh, Philip of Spain had a very powerful armada, a very powerful um, kingdom and was quite prepared and wanted to take over England. We were saved by the Royal Navy and it was the brave uh, Navy and, and Army who won that victory. Half of the Armada was destroyed, uh, partly under Drake and other commanders. And Queen Elizabeth was happy to take the credit for that very, very real threat on her reign, but also the entire country. And she didn't provide them enough ammunition and supplies. And when the sailors got back, she betrayed them. It was a case that half of the Armada was destroyed, but more English soldiers and sailors died from disease, for example, uh, and starvation than Spanish soldiers, Spanish sailors died. So it's very, very sad. Um, after the Napoleonic Wars, a similar betrayal. The so sailors came back, the soldiers came back, and uh, had to sleep rough, made camps, and so on. A lot of them starved. And that was because their country, even though they'd won the war, won the Napoleonic Wars at a great cost, uh, their country was not so impressed. And actually, they were uh, demonized by the government and new laws were created, the vagrancy laws, which are actually in, in, uh, in place to this day, uh, for people sleeping rough and begging, for example. And that was because of the uh, surfeit of soldiers coming back after the Napoleonic War rather than you know, do their bit and house them after the sacrifices that they made, the government changed the law to criminalise them and then put them in jails. Pretty awful. Anyway, the point about this is that those laws still apply and so rough sleeping in England in many places is illegal and of course if you're on uh, private land, uh, not so good either. Therefore, obviously don't break the law, but if you happen to be caught out, uh, it's best to do so after dark in a relatively remote area, away from people, away from, for example, uh, dogs, because of course they're going to sniff you out and bark, uh, away from footpaths where people are going to be coming past, and also to use no light. So when you get in, you don't want to use any torch at all, and just use your uh, night vision. You can, if you really need to, use a red head torch. That's going to be less uh, obvious and it's going to preserve your night vision. So generally, don't use light uh, when you're creating your little camp in the woods. If you have any nocturnal visitors, uh, the red head torch is going to scare them off. If it doesn't, I tend to have a small, uh, but very bright, uh, surefire torch and I use that uh, essentially for a, a form of defense. And so if you're in your bivvy bag and you wake up in the night, you hear footsteps or you hear generally a fox. It's generally the case that a little fox will be trotting around. Um, go out of the bivvy bag with your head, you have the torch, and that um, powerful beam of light and dark will scare most things away. So very quickly, when you're out here in nature, because it's where your ancestors spent most of their time, you're going to really start to enjoy the process. Obviously, the comforts that you'll have are going to be less than those comforts that you'll enjoy in a nice warm house, by a nice warm fire, perhaps in a nice warm bed with nice down duvets. But the comfort of being in nature beats all of that, I would suggest. And it's important to think about comfort. Anybody can be uncomfortable, but to really make sure your trip lasts and that you enjoy it, importantly, that you carry on performing at your best, you need to take your comfort into consideration. For example, if your boots start to rub even slightly, fill in any hot spots, quickly address that, change socks, put another pair of socks on. I tend to have one thin pair and one thicker pair to avoid blisters. If you need to, you can use plasters, all these different things, a bit of moleskin to make sure you don't get blisters that will only get worse and make your whole trip miserable. Uh, 
Likewise, if you're cold when you're sleeping, put a pair of socks on, put a balaclava on, have an extra down uh, jacket over the top of you, anything to make sure you don't get very cold. This is going to be more difficult to warm up, especially in the early hours around 3 or 4 in the morning, it's going to be pretty, pretty grim. So make sure you're nice and warm. Same if you get wet, try and avoid getting wet. Don't overheat so you don't have too many clothes on when you're moving fast uh, so that you sweat. Likewise, if there's a shower, take the time to put on your Gore-Tex waterproofs to avoid getting wet. It's relatively difficult to get dry if it's uh, humid and cold. So avoid getting wet as well. And the other thing, of course, is that uh, when you're traveling, you need to be aware of your environment. That means having uh, less screen time or no screen time at all, avoid using headphones and just really get into the sense of being in nature. It's a real great reward. That's one of the main reasons why I enjoy being out here and the more you're there just enjoying it, just being there, you get that real deep sense of contentment there that is our um, of real true nature. The gear helps you, keeps you comfortable, keeps you safer. Um, but rely on it, but also rely on your own faculties, your own self-awareness. Ask yourself if you get too cold, am I still thinking clearly? Um, ask yourself, am I taking risks that I need? And all of these different things. Make sure that above all else, safe, happy, comfortable and enjoying the time in the outdoors.